and we add that line here in the bottom. I went a little bit too far with it because on the right side it's supposed to be lighter, so it's okay, I can fix that, I can add more white. There we go. And here more white. And this might be the last little touch up detail on the mountain, just a little bit darker. I'm constantly back and forth just cleaning the brush so I, it's easier for my brush to get the color that I want without it mixing with a different shade or a different color. Um, so here I'm getting a little bit of a darker blue for this one corner of the mountain that looks too white and it's not having enough contrast. I'm going to add some white next to it. And I, what, all I'm doing is just playing back and forth with the colors and the shade to make sure that I'm matching it up. And I'm creating that illusion of depth. Now I'm just fixing up the details on the other mountains. And this is this area is too wet for now, so I'm gonna stop focusing on it. And the next thing that I'm going to do. I'm deciding to work on the clouds and then I'm going to do the tree last because if I do the tree first and then the clouds, it's going to be hard for me to do the clouds without messing up the tree. So whatever is on the back, on the background will be done first and then the tree is more on the front. So that's going to be done last. So what I do for the clouds, I'm just simply going to add white on the left side. So I am going to switch my palette paper because this is too full and I don't want to get too mixed up. Get a fresh new one. All right, so this white is mixed with blue, so we clean that up a little bit. All right, so then we add white for where the clouds are. Single brush strokes, just keep it up. And the clouds extend a little bit to the right side, so we're gonna make sure we add that. So we do have one or two clouds over here. I'm adding more white on the top, which is good. It's, look, uh, it's looking more opaque, so it stands out more. All right. So I think I am satisfied with the amount of clouds that I added, and I'm just going to let this dry for now. So now I have let this painting dry for about five to 10 minutes, and we're gonna add the tree now. The beautiful pink tree. We're gonna start with the trunk of the tree. I'll use a very small brush and I'm going to use a brown for the trunk of the tree. So I'm going to measure how low the tree is in regards to the rest of the painting and the canvas and it looks like it's closer to the bottom than to the center so i'm guessing my tree i'm 
thinking of starting it maybe over here and the trunk goes past the mountains in the picture so i'm going to add some more water so since in the picture the trunk of the tree goes past the mountains i'm going to make sure i do the same here and then the other side lines up with this mountain over here and now i just color it i'm also going to add some white to this brown because there's different shades of brown there so where the light hits so this over here is a different shade this is brighter this is brighter and now i'm going to add the dark brown I'm going to add a little bit more of dark brown. Just have to remind myself to keep you using impressionism techniques rather than just blend it in the painting. So just put the brush strokes on top of each other. So I just keep playing around with the dark and the light. So there we go, just added some wider ones. All right, so next I'm going to add the branches. This is a big tree, this is a very big tree. So I noticed that the branches in the, in the picture reference extend all the way to this corner and, ex and the tree extends all the way to this point of the reference picture. So these are gonna be some very long branches. We're gonna make sure we have some that extend up to this way. Some that go up here. We need some more darker brown. Some that extend past the halfway point of the painting, so over here. So we have some more branches. All right, now that we've done that, we will let it dry for a little bit and focus on adding this shadow part of the tree. Uh, I'm going to use a square brush for that. And now I'm just trying to figure out what color to do the shadow of the tree. So it looks kind of like a rectangle around the tree. So I am thinking of creating a type of dark grayish color. I'm just taking some time to think, in a, to think about it. Maybe like a very transparent brown. I can do that, add some water to this brown to make it very transparent and watercolory. And I'm going to use that as the shadow. I'm going to just make it a little bit darker, but add more water to make it more transparent. There we go. So it's looking a little bit too brown. Um, Therefore, I'll add some different colors to mute it a little bit more. Maybe I can add, I can try to add some red. 
mix it well. So now I'm going to add a little bit of white to create a much more muted color and try to find one that will best match up with a tree. Let's see, how is this going to look when it's very transparent? This is not as transparent right now, so I'm just going to play around with colors. I'm not liking how this mixture is looking. So I'm going to choose something else. I have this autumn looking color over here. So maybe if I mix that with the brown, I'm going to get the shadow. I'm going to get another palette sheet because this is filled up now. All right, so we have this autumn color here and then we just add more water. We add more water. Just adding more and more water to make it very transparent. I dab the I dab the brush, try to make it more squarey. Alright. I'm gonna extend the shadow a little bit more this way. Um so next I'm gonna think to mix two opposite colors. So maybe I'm going to mix some green with some red to try to make a gray. I'm gonna try to make a gray and add that to the shadow just because I'm not really liking how it's looking. I'm gonna add some more green. I'm just going to continue adding it to get a darker color. Now I'm going to add a little bit of white. So we're starting to see that the color is changing into a grayish, a very dark grayish. I'm going to add a little bit more white. I'm going to add a little bit more of red to make it softer. All right, so let's see how this is looking when I have a lot of water in it. So this is just playing around to see, to find the shadows and the colors that we like just a bunch of playing around this is still very brown so i will add a lot more white let's see it is getting grayer there we go so i'll add a lot of water see now we have a gray awesome so we've applied the technique of impressionism uh, that says do not use gray or black and unless you mix it yourself through complementary colors so i'm adding this shadow here i'm still not liking how it looks like as much just because it is not matching very well with the grass in the back, but that's okay. I'm just gonna leave it for now and start working on the tree 
and the pink flowers are my very favorite parts of this. So I'm going to grab my pale pink color. I have a pale lilac as well. And it seems like the pale lilac is mixing is uh, matching better with the reference photo, but that's okay. I will use both of them. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna do little dabs to fill these branches up. This tree is gonna be big, so we keep just keep doing that. We have to make sure that they're not very transparent. So we don't add as much water. Basically, at this point, all I do is just add the flowers all over the tree till it fills up. I'm going to add the lilac color as well. I'm going to speed up this process and come back when this is filled. So I'm back and I filled up the, uh, the flowers in the pink and the tree. And it's looking pretty flat, so I kind of want to add some more color to it that will pop out. So I'm going to use a magenta color. And just do the same, dab, dab, dab all over the tree. I'm hoping that this will add more definition just because it's looking very flat and I'm not very happy with it. So let's see how this goes. I'll speed up the process and come back when this is filled. So I finally added the rest of the magenta pink that I used, this one, and I removed the washi tape, and I think that for now, I am satisfied with how this painting is looking so far. So I'm going to end it at this. Thank you for watching.